Oh, that was fun. They love, they love the confetti cannon. The custodians, not so much. Not so much. But all right, well, I've got a question for you. What was the best gift you ever received as a child? Can you think of it? The best gift you ever received. Maybe think of those Christmas mornings so long ago. Depending on your age, maybe was it a Tinker Toy or Lincoln Logs? Ah, bicycle, that's always a big one. The, who, who remembers the erector set? Sock monkey? How about a Buck Rogers disintegrating pistol? A Red Rider BB gun? Oh, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. Slinky? Who got a slinky on Christmas morning? It's generational. You see, I'm going through the generations. How about Mr. Potato Head? Jacob just turned seven. You know what he wanted for his birthday? Mr. Potato Head. Still, evergreen, it's always good, right? What was your reaction when you opened that gift up Christmas morning? Joy. Did you jump up and down? Did you scream your head off? Or you're like, ah, eh, throw one more on the pile. No, you felt it, right? Right? How did it make you feel to open up that special gift from someone who loved you? Shout him out. Come on. Wonderful. Embarrassed? Afraid? No. Happy. Joyful, right? I'm going to assume that because someone loved you enough to give you that, uh, uh, helped you feel that way, and they wanted to give you a gift that would excite you or bring you joy, give you the desires of your heart, make you happy. So if you had someone like that in your life, know that you're loved. Give thanks for that, right? You were blessed. Uh, in Matthew's gospel today, we hear this story of Jesus, and, and they want to know if Jesus is the one they should be waiting for. So they go and they ask him, are you the one who is to come? Or is it John the Baptist? Should we wait for someone else? And they wonder, because John the Baptist, you know, he was out there in the wilderness, and he was telling people to repent. They were going to be judged. And he was kind of a harsh teacher, right? Jesus says, this is something else. Jesus calls the people in a different way. He wants them to receive the gift of God's grace as children, as children do with joy and excitement and curiosity. That's how he calls us to hear God's promises. Pure joy, gratitude, and excitement. Watch this video. Well, it was supposed to be the worst Christmas present ever. A couple wrapped up a banana and gave it to their toddler, and they certainly weren't expecting this reaction. <laughs> Two-year-old Aria Mojica squealed with joy. She really loves bananas and asked her mom to unpeel it right then so she could eat it. This heartwarming video has gone viral with millions of views online. Love it. <laughs> Banana! Yes! Wow. So uh, I think what we're going to do from now on is after we hear the gospel reading, we're all going to go, Banana! That's how God wants us to receive those promises with pure joy and excitement and celebration. He wants that for you too, for all of us, to live in this way, to celebrate, to give thanks, to have joy, to rejoice at all times. Jesus has promised us these gifts of grace and mercy and life everlasting. But how do we know the promise is good? Well, to quote Metz Pitcher, Tug McGraw, you got to believe. I think that was a, like they're saying for like 50 years. Mets fans? Any Mets fans? No, I didn't think so. As we continue our sermon series on faith, talking about how that faith matters in our lives. Faith is what allows us to feel that joy and excitement and gratitude when we hear God's promises in our life. You got to believe. It's through faith that we grasp those promises because you can hear them. You can imagine what it might be like, but it's in faith when you believe that those promises are good, that they really become yours. Can't see it. We often don't feel it, and the reality around us seems to deny it. But hearing that word brings us to faith, to trust that God's word is good for us and will sustain us forever. Uh, theologian, seminary professor at Luther Seminary, author Steve Paulson 
writes that faith grasps the promise in complete assurance. He says, faith gets its voice and begins verbalizing to God in prayer by asserting, you promised. Think of stories in the Bible where, uh, you know, God makes a promise to somebody and, and, and then uh, and takes it back. You, you always think of those stories, right? I, I can't think of one. God takes it back? God takes back the promise? No. No, God fulfills promises. Now, the people do mess it up from time to time, but yet still God is faithful. Still God does what the word says. Faith gets its voice and begins verbalizing to God in prayer by asserting, you promised. When we pray, we can say that to God. You promised, so I'm holding you to it, God, because God's good to the word. Children get this, right? Did you ever make a promise to a kid? They will not let you forget about it. It was a great meme online. I couldn't find it to share with you today, but it said, uh, uh, I asked my kid to clean his room five minutes ago, and he already forgot. Yet they will come in your room and say, on uh, September 1st at 2.06 p.m., you said we might go get ice cream after school today. They remember that. They remember those things. They will not let you off the hook. They, you promised, they cry out. Well, I read this week that it's because children have not yet uh, learned to reason, you know, fully, because they live in their feelings and their emotions, right? And we do that too sometimes. But their emotions create this brilliant visualization. If I say ice cream, you've got a picture of ice cream in your head. You know what that's going to taste like. You know how that's going to make you feel. You know what it's going to look like. It's going to have sprinkles and unicorns and, and cherries and all the good stuff, right? Not going to let you off the hook for that. They can see it. And all the more, when mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, someone they trust has made that promise, they know it's good because they trust you. Mm. And they expect that parent to do what they said they would do. But we're like that with God too, right? You promised, God. We can shout that out when things maybe don't seem to be going the way we thought they would, when that promise doesn't seem to be coming true in our lives. But we know God's gifts are received in faith when we believe. You can write that down. It's on your bulletin and bring that home with you today. Have some scripture on your refrigerator during the week. In Christ, God has promised us everything. And God's gifts are received in faith. God's promised mercy, forgiveness, abundant, everlasting life. But that's the trouble. We can't imagine what that looks like all the time. We can't see it right in front of us. We can't touch it or grab it physically with our hands because we're only human. Our perception is limited. So we struggle and we don't see everything unfolding as we think it should. And it might be hard to see how we're welcomed into a family of people who are quite different from us, who look or act and live differently. We hear that we've been freed from sin and what does that look like in reality? And we know all too well that our bodies wear out and people die. So how can we live forever? What's that all about? We grasp these promises in faith. And Peter, the apostle Peter, connects faith with receiving God's promises, saying, although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. Banana! We rejoice even when we, we can't see it, right? When we have faith, the world looks differently. Even though we suffer, we have faith that God is good. God is good all the time. Even though we suffer, we know that to be true. We can trust that things will improve. Even when we're hungry, if we're faithful, we know that God's going to provide. When we feel alone, faith reminds us that Christ is present, that God hears our prayers and knows our hearts and is always near. And even when things are not as they should be, and usually they are not, we are still God's children, forgiven, made free from sin and death through Christ's death and resurrection. So this is the promise. Jesus died and rose again and promises that we won't be alone. We will be with him 
that we would even have the Spirit of God in us. That's a promise that Jesus makes. That Spirit moves in us and brings us to faith, and we trust Jesus so we can believe that promise is good. It's true. We can count on it. You can visualize it. You can imagine it and and imagine it yours now. So we have this Holy Spirit in us. But now what? What's going to happen? Well, Jesus frees us to live by the Spirit. We've got this power, so we've got to live by it. We get to live by it, right? We don't go through life the same, worrying about the same old stuff, fighting the same old battles of guilt or shame. Through this Spirit, this one that Christ sends to us, Jesus says, I'm going to give you an advocate. We have the power of God that brings healing and hope and help. But that's not all. The Spirit, she's a giver, right? Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All that good stuff is yours. Y'all excited about that? Yeah? Can we rejoice in that? Banana! Yes! We got it now. They're gonna, people are going to walk in here off the street, and they're going, they're shouting banana? I don't know what this place is. But when, you give, when you receive a gift, well, you want to say thank you, don't you? Well, do you just say thank you to the ether, to the floor, to the furniture? No, you thank the giver of that gift, Right? You get excited, you celebrate, you seek out that person. Did you give me this? I love this. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you for this gift. And that brings you closer too, doesn't it? Faith allows us to celebrate now what we know we will receive in the future, even though we don't see it. We can love others now with joy, even when we might not always be happy. We can find peace when the world seems out of control or messed up. We can practice patience with each other. I hope so. We can participate in acts of kindness, be generous, faithful, even though we might have doubts. Be gentle to others and to ourselves and practice self-control for the sake of God's beloved people. To live by that spirit is to live faithfully, trusting that that spirit's power is at work in us, is active at all times, and believing, trusting that Jesus is walking with us through everything and giving glory to God every chance we get, seeking him out to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. What a beautiful day you gave us today. And a little bird that was jumping around out there in the grass, that was awesome. Thank you, God. Banana. Jesus does it all the time. Jesus thanks his father for revealing the kingdom, not to those who thought they were wise, those who would become wise by adhering to the rule books, following the law, judging all those who did the wrong thing. They thought they were smart. But he thanks God for revealing the kingdom to those who knew real struggle, sickness and shame and poverty and loss. And he must have known they would be the ones who the burden of those rules and laws would fall on the hardest, who would feel that yoke of the law around their necks. They would be ones to receive God's promises with real gratitude, knowing the difference it made in their lives. Faithful people are thankful people. Faithful people are thankful people, even when times are tough, right? We can still give thanks. Jesus invites the world to find rest in him, not to be working for their salvation, not to be working to live up to some law. He knows people need it. We need that rest. As so many fight still to find justice, work themselves to death just to survive, find healing from addiction or disease or grief and loneliness, this rest offered by Jesus is rest from trying to live up to some standard, rest from trying to save ourselves, resting in God's grace, resting from the burdens of shame and self-loathing and guilt and regret. Jesus says, come to me and I will give you what you really need. 
I will take it all. I will take those burdens and I will give you what you really need. And we say, thank you, God. Banana! We are thankful because in faith, we find our rest in Jesus. And the author of Colossians writes it this way. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and be thankful. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. When we are faithful, that peace of Christ rules our hearts, not the need to succeed, not our own anxiety or the expectations of the world or the people around us. That peace rules in us. And then that makes us thankful people because we know every good gift is from God. And when the world fails us, We know God's steadfast love endures forever through all things. And we live in gratitude and give God the glory. There were certainly times in my life when faith was not on the forefront. Faith was not a part of the story. And those were the times when I look back that I felt the most alone, afraid, angry, upset. Without faith, that's where we are. We're on our own. We're trying to just do it all ourselves, trying to achieve or succeed by our own merits. And we know only what we see, what we can touch, what we can grab. And we become cynical, unappreciative, selfish. We only celebrate what we receive by the work of our hands, and our rest won't last. Push to fight and scrape by and struggle and fail and freak out and forget the needs of others around us. And it might work for a while, but how can it mean anything? How can it last? Faith matters because faith leads us to celebrate, to appreciate God's gifts and to live with gratitude, even in hard times, to receive the promises of God here and now like a child, to celebrate, to be curious, to be excited and to rejoice to know that we belong to Christ and we are not alone. We have each other. We have the power of forgiveness, healing, and new life that comes to us through the cross and that spirit that leads us to abundant life here and now. We don't have to wait for us. It belongs to us now. The promise is real, and it's for you. And all God's gifts are yours today, received in faith. So we say thank you, God, and... Banana! (laughs) Let's pray. God, you're good. You're unbelievably good sometimes. So help us when we need a little help. Help us to believe. Help us to trust in you. Help us to have faith even when times are rough, even when people we know are hurting, even when we feel like our bodies are failing, even when we are sad or sick or afraid. Give us strong faith to know that you are near, that your promises are ours now. We receive them in faith. Help us to have joy and to celebrate and to give thanks to you at all times because you are our provider, our healer, our graceful God given to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.